his mic on, right? Yes. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 2019 UMI King of the Mountain, 10 grand on the line, 32 of the baddest autocross guys and gals on the planet vying it out for the biggest purse in autocross history. We are live right here on Facebook. You guys are watching, and all the fans are parked up here on the hill looking down at this racetrack. They are ready to hear the horsepower and see these cars tearing it up. The crowd is getting good out here, Ramey. I'm excited. We're like two-thirds full on the hill already. I know. Love it. I, I heard all kinds of cool stuff about the history of the hill here. So everybody knows, set up your easy up, your barbecue, all those things, hang out, drink beer. But I guess there's an old uh, like tradition of throwing beer cans over the fence toward the wall. We'd like to keep from that one this weekend. Uh, you and my president, Ryan Kirkwood, does not allow that here at UMI and Motorsports Park. There you go. The throwing of cans in it. Yes. Enjoy your beverages, but recycle responsibly. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. In the stands, we got about half rebuilt. Yeah. So they were a little bit falling down. Ryan bought a bunch of new decking, and uh, they're about half full down at the bottom as well. Pretty it awesome. It is. It's way awesome. We've got great concessions going on here. Remember, all of you folks that are in the grandstands, we've got barbecue, we've got food, we have monkey bread the size of my head. That is that I'm eating that next. I'm telling you, Ramey. I'm so excited. I need to get a snack. I need to get a drink. And I want to be right there front and center because the action is going to be amazing. Yeah, I saw a bunch of monkey bread and a bunch of barbecue in the stands earlier. So I'm telling you, people are already having a good yeah. time. And the people that are having the most fun, though, are our qualifiers. The ones that have made it in, the 32 cars that are here in the show. We've got three different lists because the qualifying was separated into three different criteria to get into this show. So we have the 10 fastest that make up the one through 10 position. We have the next 10 with the fastest mile per hour in the speed trap. And then we have those that were most consistent rounding out the top 30 along with two picks from Ryan Kirkwood. So that's how we got the 32. And these are who the qualifiers ended up being. Yeah, top dog. Fastest combined times for both days, Ryan Finch. In a BMW of all things, which is a little weird in this crowd of American-made cars, but the top two are actually both imports. Ryan putting on a show, an absolute display, yeah. battling it out all weekend long with Brandon Ranbeck in that incredible RS Motors Evo. Those two leading a big pack of Corvettes. That is correct, yes. Yeah, so Ryan Finch and... Uh, Car owner Bradley Yonkers, who qualified ninth, actually, um, kind of took their BMW apart. No <laughs> interior, no headlights until tonight. Yeah. So the rules for King of the Mountain were pretty awesome. 200 treadwear and bring a helmet. Yeah, and and really everybody was trying to get their stuff light, um, and these guys took it to the max. I mean, there is literally a door skin and nothing else on each side of this car. Um, but you know what? They went by the rules, and they that's did. that's cool. That's racing. I that's like that. Correct. Um, number three on the property, we have this. Uh, uh, he's not all that famous. <laughs> okay, Danny Pop. Dude, Danny Pop, multi-time Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational champion, uh, driving his famed blue C5 Corvette. Uh, Danny is always one to watch. He struggled a little yesterday. Um, had trouble getting around the racetrack without hitting some cones was pretty fast but not as fast as he wanted to be today he came out swinging first few laps were a little rough but then he got right up there to the top of the heap and then it was a battle among about five of them um yeah. danny right there in the thick of things i rode in the blue rocket at ls fest on a speed stop yeah and uh, under acceleration my eyes got blurry with that lemon color engine yeah that thing makes big power um, it's obviously dialed in, and Danny is just one of those competitors that's always fast, no matter what he's in, no matter where he's at. Another vet hot shoe, Paul Curley. So <laughs> Paul had a little bit of a problem. So Paul is actually in a borrowed car, but it didn't seem to matter to the driver mod behind the wheel with Paul Curley. No, he. I really feel bad for him. You know, he had a fire that really burned up that beautiful Corvette he normally runs. Um, his old man said, "Well." As long as you don't tear mine up like you tore up yours, then I'll let you drive it. And he obviously is putting on a show. 
Curly is another one of those guys that's fast in anything. He is, yeah. Yeah, driver mod's real important, and uh, Paul's one of the best. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of one of the best. <laughs> Come on. Number five on the list, and he likes to say with the stock engine. Yeah. Sam Strano, UMI Motorsports Park sponsor, good friend of UMI, laid it down in the fifth position. And you know what? Uh, I think it's a big deal that he laid it down in the fifth position, and the reason I say that is Strano has obviously been a big part of what you do here. He's always been involved in track layout, helping you actually build this facility from a where to put pavement perspective. Yep. Um, the fact that he finished in the number five spot really shows you um, that this guy, like no pre-running the course, didn't know exactly how it was gonna be laid out, absolutely above board, pretty cool deal, otherwise he would've won this thing handily. Yep, and uh, next Corvette on the list is a local hero, Justin Peachy, young guy raced his way in at the July Autocross Challenge. Yeah, and you know what, Peachy is a really cool dude, like super, super nice guy, beautiful car, knows how to wheel it, has been autocrossing for some time, but like you said, he he raced his way in and really has opened some eyes. Yeah. There are people watching him, he's clean. Clean is gonna be key. We're gonna talk after we talk about the 32, about what it's gonna take to win this race, and fast is not the top priority. Yep, kind of a young gun, real uh, real smooth. Yeah. And don't hit a cone. No, it's gonna hit be a big. Cone, you're out. Uh, speaking of bad fast, so I actually first time I met Jeremy Swenson. So a lot of the other you and my guys have met him before, but uh, he's everything that I he's packed up to be. That's for oh, sure. Dude, this guy is hardcore. He had a throwout bearing go out in the uh, in the drivetrain and the transmission of this Corvette. And these things have a transaxle in them, so this isn't a, uh, <laughs> this isn't like pulling a Muncie out of something, you know? And they took it over to your shop. You guys let them use the lift. They thrashed on this thing for a couple hours, got it apart, put a throwout bearing in it, yeah. came out and threw down a number. Yeah, he sent me a picture and uh, everything was out of the car. Yeah. Laying on the floor. Yeah. Change message jack, but you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah. So uh, Brian Peters is next, SCCA national champ. and. Uh, he laid down some great times in the JDP prepared Corvette. Yeah, you know, I, I live on the West Coast or, or did until recently and have the opportunity to hang out with the JDP crew and, and Jordan and his crew are just awesome guys. They know how to build real power. They know how to set up a car. They have Corvettes and Camaros of their own that have been very, very successful uh, all over the country. But, um, you know, you're, you're seeing more and more cars besides the West Coast that are sending their stuff to Salt Lake City to get parts or buying stuff from those guys. Uh, it, it's really cool to see a JDP uh, prepared ride out here this weekend. Yeah, and valued UMI dealer. Yeah, hey, you know, they know what good stuff is. Yeah. And uh, we talked about nine, Bradley Yonkers and the BMW. And then we have, what is that? that I know, dude, the silent assassin, Mr. Laughlin, John Laughlin in a Tesla. It's a 2019 Tesla, and I'm like, really? The, this car is fast. He did good yesterday. Today, he swapped front tires. He wanted a set of ACRs to get a little more grip. It helped him. He's in the number 10 spot. Did the tires make the difference? Would he been in number 11 otherwise? That I haven't heard. Right? See, so that's the big deal, is it the key to making the win? Also, big question. If you win this event on any tire besides the ACR, you get an additional $2,000 bonus. That is correct, $12,000 to win. Since he only has two ACRs, does he get a $1,000 bonus? 1100 <laughs> well, we'll have to ask Ronnie about that. He might be happy with 10,000. He might, I think he probably will be. Yeah, because it takes a lot of nine volt batteries to make that it thing does. run. Oh. All right, the next mile 10 is hour. mile an hour. I love this one. So what we do is, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory on time, right? You know, your first day time or second day time, add them together, the quick 10 or the guys. For mile an hour, we had a speed trap yesterday. We had a yeah. speed trap today. Take both of those mile an hours, add them together. The biggest number wins. Um, and I'll tell you, that changed today. It did. Today was a bigger mile an hour end, so a bigger mile an hour speed trap, and that 10 cars shuffled around quite a bit it did. And, uh, and saved some guys, that's for sure. 
coming out on top was uh, Brendan King from Viking Performance. Crusader equipped vet. Yeah. Big wing on the back, big power under the hood. You know, and that car is, uh, is, is fast. Brendan is only 18 years old, never driven that car before. Um, honestly, it showed yesterday. He had some struggles early on, but once he got a handle of that thing, he was pretty fast. Um, I think that hurt his average time, but I think that big horsepower and, uh, and his lack of fear was able to get him there on top a mile an hour, obviously. One of the young guns of the sport. Oh, yeah. Mild-mannered, great kid. Yep. Heavy right foot. Oh, yeah. Reminds me of my son, Cole. 18 years old, not afraid of anything. Winning, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I know. I've been following. I know. And uh, we have another guy here, Robbie Unser. Yeah, Robbie Unser. That Unser. Yeah, we're talking about the Unser family. They race in uh, autocross series all over the place. Little Al, Robbie, the entire Unser family has a great time with this stuff. And, and it, it's so cool to see them out here in the Speedway Motors cars. Robbie is an absolute hoot to be around. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, he, he is loud. He is obnoxious in all the right ways. He's an infectious guy to be around. And, uh, and that really unique 67 Camaro was flying. It was. It was pretty cool to have him at the UMI shop. Oh, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, come on. He's a hunter, and he is such a good dude, seriously. Yep. Eric Fleming with a, a new car Yep. because he had a little problem. Yep. It, you know, it's um, it's one of those things where when you see a guy that comes in and ends up at an event with a diversity, right? Like we mentioned Paul Curley early also. You know, that one is a, a neat it's cool to see somebody who's struggled, who's had a hard time, and who perseveres and comes out and does well. It's good to yep. see him. Yep. Track day at Road Atlanta, and he uh, had a small problem and yeah. uh, kind of, well, lost the car. Yeah. Built a new one in a month or two. Now he's here at the Top 32 shootout. Which is cool. Joe Gregory in the Bruiser. Yeah. You know, talk about a great family. The Gregory family has really been cool to be around the last few years in the autocross world. They're just super nice guys, uh, always having a good time, and no surprise to see them making big power in that Corvette. Yep. Joe Gregory's on leaderboards across the U.S. So. Oh, all the time, yep. yeah. John Hogan, neat dude, got to meet him from California. Stopped yeah. by, picked up Brian Peters, and uh, drove over here to Pennsylvania. Here, John Hogan is actually from Pennsylvania. Yeah. So he actually knew where the Clearfield exit was, crazy. And yeah, because uh, nobody else did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he found himself in the top 32. And then one of my favorites, okay, one of my boys, I've known this man for a very long time, his family, Jason Brady, uh, out of Huntenburg, Indiana, just a great, great guy. Him, him and his dad, Trent, are out here racing this weekend in that really bitchin' K5 Blazer. This thing is awesome, right? It is not the vehicle you expect to see on an autocross. And I guarantee you, all the wins that they've got, all the trophies they've got, have shown everybody what a Chevy K5 can do, and this one can do it all. It's gigantic, Yeah. lightweight, and wins a lot. Oh, yeah. Pretty awesome. It's almost as wide as it is long. It is. <laughs> okay, Jeremy McCauley in the LS3 powered Miata. You know. Local hot shoe. And SCCA. awesome dude, yep. right? He's a good guy. And. Sure for a good cause, right? Yep. So Brad Long, the, the guy who actually got the entry for King of the Mountain, said, I want this entry to be used by Macaulay. I want him to be my shoe. We're gonna take this LS3 powered Miata and take it to the win. And if we do, in honor of my little girl, we are going to donate the entire $10,000 to Spina Bifida. But there's a twist to that that you may not even know, Ring. So if they win, I don't know. They're on BFGs, so they get the other two grand. The yeah. other two grand is actually going to Macaulay. In fact, I don't know if Macaulay knows it yet. He's about to find out. Surprise. The other two grand's going to Macaulay so he can donate it to the American Cancer Society because awesome. his family has been affected by cancer. Charity on charity on charity happening here. Yep. Aaron Oberly and Grandpa. Dude. Actually, a masked power grandpa. Yeah, dude. Masked black label power under the hood, an incredible chassis under the body, just the slightest cool patina, and a car that he drives everywhere. And talk about a guy that's been afflicted with, you know, some emotional trauma and some physical trauma over the last few years. Uh, Aaron with us, luckily. 
thanks to uh, some really successful treatments for leukemia. What a great guy. Awesome to see him out here. Uh, near and dear to my heart, that dude is bad to the bone, and he knows how to be fast when it counts. He does. Patrick Duncan, and only third gen to make the top 32. Only third gen here, maybe. No, there are a couple of third gens here. Oh, but Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Harris. The Ryan Harris. The yes. Ryan Harris. Well, he had nitrous. He did, and I loved it. But... You know, I'm a third gen guy. I like third gen Camaros. Um, I really wish he had a mullet. It would make it better. We'll work on that for next year. He does have a UMI hat usually, so that's pretty cool. That's true. It is. It's pretty good. And rounding out miles per hour, Chris Jacobs. And, and <laughs> I joke with him about it. So this Corvette is like rowdy, loud, yeah. like wins a lot. And uh, its nickname is Fluff. I know, you know, it, it's funny everybody has come up with nicknames for their cars over the last few years. It's just become a thing. And Fluffy. Fluffy. Ain't hey, nothing fluffy about it, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but his wife, his wife, Linda, has an awesome 66 Chevelle convertible. Tough looking. Awesome. I mean, awesome car. Pretty and good it's power. Name, it's wimp wimpy. Wimpy. Yeah. wimpy. Yep. You know. Yeah, consistency. So we wanted a way at not only develop you know my King of the Mountain to give everyone a shot. Yep. That doesn't mean you're not going to get creamed in the finals. Right. But you get a chance to prove your driving, prove your worth. Yep. And uh, earn your way in. So consistency. Yep. So we took uh, all the runs and we ditched the worst two. Yep. And we got the range of the rest. Right. So, so if if your total times you know, if your if your top times of the week or weekend didn't vary by more than a tenth, and the next guy is varied by two tenths, then the guy with one tenth was obviously more consistent. Yep. So these guys are taking high horsepower cars, and I think Ron Scott, um, the most consistent. Yep. In the '63 split window, big horsepower. Yep. Great handling, just all around. You know, super awesome car. I think he was within three tenths for the weekend. Yes, and you know, arguably, that's more difficult than just going out there and running fast or running a big mile an hour. The truth of the matter is, with the exception of one guy on this list, who we will talk about in a moment, everybody on this list knew they were not going to be the fastest guys, so they focused strictly on being as consistent as they could. That is very, very difficult on an autocross course in a vehicle like that. Ron Scott deserves major kudos on that one. Yeah, so uh, we have some smart guys on this list. Oh, so, you ain't kidding, Ryan Matthews, number two on the list, he's one of them. Yep, Detroit Speed Engineer has his uh, 67? 69. 69. 69 first gen Camaro. Yep, it's and, a uh, 275 car, uh, all uh, 275 uh, tires all the way around, uh, leaf springs, stock front subframe with a bunch of custom parts that he did very simple car unbelievably cool very well balanced ryan is having an absolute riot driving it for the second event in a row this car has been parked for a while yep. i don't think it's going to stay parked very long he's having so much fun in it so he was on the invite list anyway yeah um but then he also won the autocross challenge in his division in july yep completely different tracks so the practice didn't help no nope. we're pretty pumped to have him here for two events so oh i awesome. agree i gotta tell you the third and fourth guys excite me to no end okay yep. the number three guy tremble because i worship that g-body malibu he has that thing is so sexy so cool i want that that's my perfect pro touring g-body right there oh and uh so he was super consistent. Yep. Really wanted to be in. Yep. And it's UMI equipped. You know, that doesn't surprise me at all because that thing is amazing. Yep. And the truth is, you guys have focused on G-Body handling performance more than anybody in the aftermarket. I'm going to say it right here because it's the truth. And that is one of the cars that proves it. Yep. So I'm going to say this in front of everybody for Chuck. Right? Yeah. So he built a three link for it by himself, true yeah. hot rodder. Put a watch link on it and uh, just developed by himself. True hot rodding, pretty yeah. awesome. Love oh, it. it's a neat, neat car. And my buddy, Ken Edwards, in the number four spot. This is funny. 
Ken is the guy that spent zero time thinking about consistency. All he was trying to do was run as fast as he could, knew he wasn't going to make it into the top 10. His car is completely capable of it, but Ken is too busy smiling and having fun to worry about being the fastest guy. Until this morning, he had no idea where he was in the consistency ladder until Ryan Matthews walked up to him and went, how are you doing this? And he goes, what do you mean? <laughs> Anybody that knows Ken will know that that is no surprise whatsoever. Um, I have to tell you, he's a really good friend of mine. There are several good friends of mine here. I have favorites, I am not gonna lie. Ken Edwards is on my short list that yeah. would just be the coolest to win this thing. His uh, catchphrase is, it's good to be him. Oh, it is way good to be him, and there are no bad days. Yep. Speaking of good, this guy here, Craftsman Extraordinaire, 60 Corvette. Yep. Nick Weber. You know, Nick Weber's one of those guys that he used to have a blue Chevelle that was absolutely spectacular, ran it at Optima events. I had the privilege of hanging out with him. This car was stunningly built. Um, all by him, just absolutely beautiful. Sold that car to build the 60. I talked to him about it this morning. It, quite frankly, the 60 is the wrong car. Like there is nothing about this car that is the right car to start with. The chassis under this thing is an amazing work of tubular art. Um, it required a ton of work to be able to fit in these cars. These cars are little. Um, he did a great job. Nick deservingly got that cool award for design yeah, excellence. From Alumacraft. Yeah, God, what a great group of people. They built these really bitchin' aluminum, uh, billet aluminum machine trophies. Um, just a great, great deal. I, I'm glad to see Nick out here. He's having a great time. Yeah. So this is one of those guys where his people say, you won't find a better guy. Yeah. Tim Strange. You know, another guy that's out there all the time running this car. His car is absolutely like a standout. It's got this crazy wrap on it. Um, it's fast. It's cool. He's one of the nicest guys on earth, like you said. It's really great to see him out here having a good time because that's what he's all about. Yep. Cool father and son combo here. So Chris King, Viking Performance. Yep. You know, Chris has got the Viking Camaro. Really unique car. It's got some cool stuff like mufflers in the trunk. I love that yep. car. A lot of carbon fiber built by Dick's Hot Rod Shop. Yeah, it and is it, a neat car, dude. And uh, handles awesome because of the Viking Crusaders. Yeah, you know, they're a great sponsor out here. We really appreciate their, uh, their efforts. We have a great group of companies that have been out here supporting not only the racetrack, but this event. And, uh, and it's cool to see, for sure, glad to see him in it. Yep, this is a neat one here. So, um, this next guy has a reputation of driving a lot sideways. You know, wheels in the air. Oh yeah. Just going nuts. But apparently he's consistent too, Billy Utley. You know, Billy Utley is one of those guys that lets his right foot speak for him. He's a really quiet guy when you first get to know him. That Nova, is, I'm a, I like those big Novas. They're awesome. There are a couple of them here that are really neat. But that car turned everybody on their ear when it came out a few years ago. It's stunningly beautiful. It's crafted really well. It weighs 3,388 pounds. I talked to him about it this morning. It is no lightweight, but that car could be a killer out here tonight because Billy knows how to wheel it, yeah. and clean laps are what's going to win. He is one that you might want to watch. So this is a cool dude, Jeffrey Wolpert. So he earned his way in in a borrowed car. Yeah. Then he makes his way into the top 32 in a borrowed car. Our good buddy Mike Goodman had a co-driver SCCA style. Yeah. So uh, Jeffrey nipped him by a little tiny bit. So Jeffrey Wolpert's in in the second gen. Leaf sprint. Yeah, you know, and that's what's neat about the, the consistency part of this is that it really rewards you for being the guy that's good every time, right? You don't have to be the best one time out of 10 you got to be good 8 out of 10. And uh, and it's really cool to see it, like you said, Wolpert on a Leaf Spring car. I love that. Yep. So this dude, this is another one of those great dude things. Yep. So Scott Connect. Or yep. Nick, you know, I call him Connect. Yeah. So, I think it depends on where in the country yeah. you're from. So his vet's not ready yet, Brown Sugar. It has a 406 oval track engine in it. And yes. It's box. And it's, it's usually backwards or sideways. I've been both of those things on the same run, yep. so it's okay. So uh, he brought his C5 and made it in. You know, I know that 
there are a lot of Corvettes here, right? We cannot forget that. I mean, a lot of Corvettes. Yeah. It's going to be one of the things everybody talks about. But I know there are several guys here who didn't get other rides done in time. So they brought their backup cars as C5s. It's really hard to argue with how good those Corvettes are, though. It is. So that gives us 30 people. Yep. Two more to go. So we're needing a nice even number for the bracket, 32 bracket. Yep. So our president, Ryan Kirkwood, had a tough decision to make. So we got two pretty awesome dudes here. And uh, number 31 is Matthew Braun. Braun was the 11th quickest car on the property. So we chose the top 10 based on ET. He was number 11. Nobody's going to argue whether he was worthy of being in this 32 car field. Uh, he co-drives Tony G's ABC Performance Chevelle, and, which is a, a you know, tough competitor to our Le Mans. Yeah, and it shows just how good that car is, how well prepared it is. Tony G has been fast in it, but man, Matthew Braun owned it. Um, but I have to tell you, number 32, the most bang shifty car out here this weekend, a car that just absolutely turns my crank, driven by a guy named Rick Hoback. And I got to tell you, Hoback is crazy. He's fun. He holds multiple land speed records. He's been very fast on the autocross, on the road course. He drives everything. RX-7s, Corvettes, all kinds of swoopy cars. He shows up in a 1970 Subaru van on a Legends chassis. Yeah, so Rick, <laughs> Rick signed up at PRI. He so was, excited. He was on the original list. Yep. So we asked people to send their, what car they're gonna have, because we wanted to you know, deny cars if someone's gonna bring something crazy. Right. So he wrote, to be determined. Right. So we talked to him a couple times. We're like, you know you have to like, whatever. Yeah. So when I published the rules a little bit ago, um, I put no shifter carts on it. Yep. Just because of Rick Hoback. And uh, and I will it say no Legends cars next year because of Rick Hoback? We may have to do that. I'm totally okay with that, and so will he. So if, when you guys see this thing later on camera, it looks like a miniature Volkswagen bus, but it, it is a Subaru van. The thing is the original length and the original width, but it has these really crazy quickly built foam and Luan you know, flares on it. It was built in three weeks at night only. The thing is seven inches shorter in height than it originally was because they cut all the rust off the bottom of it. Yeah. It's awesome. It yeah. is not the fastest car here, although he did say when he got the invite or when he got into the 32, he said he had been sandbagging, that all of the problems he pretended to have were just that, pretending and that he was going out to win against everybody. And I gotta tell you, that thing has run really clean laps. He could take some people out. So we've been worried about the Tesla. I don't wonder if we should worry about the Hoback. Oh, I think we're gonna. I don't think there's anybody here that you have the luxury of thinking as, a, of, as an easy target. No. You know, let me explain something to you folks. It is going to be key to make clean laps, okay? Each cone costs two seconds in penalty. So if you are going out there and you are 1.999 seconds slower or less than the guy you're racing and he gets a cone, you're winning. Yep. So yeah, this field's tight. It is, tight and field. so is that course. You guys put a couple of cones out there that are just plain evil. Yeah. Evil, Ramey. We had to evil. Slow, slow Danny Paul down. Yeah, bit. well, I think you did it. There are guys out there on three wheels standing on the bumper trying to stop them. I mean, this is a cool racetrack. It is fast in some spots, ultra slow in others. It is going to reward the consistent guy. That means that those competitors in the number 20 to 30 spots who got in on consistency may actually have the advantage going into round one where those guys are going to go up against the higher ranked top 10 racers in several cases. It's going to be interesting to see if any of the big boys get knocked out. It could happen. It totally could happen. the excitement of racing under the lights. I'm with you. I got to tell you, I'm super excited about this. Again, folks, we are here for the $10,000 King of the Mountain presented by 
the wonderful Visit Clearfield County. These guys are awesome. They have been a great sponsor. We appreciate the support. They've advertised this thing. They've gotten all these people in with free tickets. This is a great association, a great partnership you guys have created. It is. They want to grow Clearfield, you know, promote Clearfield tourism. Looks like we got almost a full hill worth of tourists. Love it. I like it. Yep. I have to tell you one of the things, you know, I've, I've been here now for three events and um, I have to say I, I appreciate you guys inviting me here to come do this with you guys every time. I've had a very good time doing it. I feel like part of the UMI family when I'm here. It's great being able to help with these charities. But one of the other things that really is great to me is talking to all these racers that I see everywhere in the country who come out here and they're going, man, this is the coolest event I've ever been to. I mean, when you get somebody like Mary Posey who's making statements like that, you know, these are people that race at events under all kinds of sanctioning bodies and do this all over the country all year. When they come here for the first time and make a statement like that, that's something you guys should be proud of. And, uh, and I'm just happy to be the tiniest little loud part of it. <laughs> Bang shift Chad, huh? You know, hey, we're here. So. Want to thank our other sponsors too. We couldn't be here without the fine folks at Viking. We mentioned them earlier. Of course, Ron Francis Wiring, ProTouring.com, Bear Breaks. Um, you know, Turn One, they're here. They gave everybody mugs today, which was Customized really cool. Mugs, yeah, really yeah. Cool. Forge Line, the finest wheels in pro touring, obviously. Um, you know, without all of these sponsors, there's no way that this could happen. And uh, and we really want to thank them. Hawks Performance, um, Sano, you said. I mean, they, we, we've got yeah. great people here that are helping out. And we've been racing around on the old Shed World carts. Walking, there walking. may or may not have been one of those that was borrowed earlier, but it has since been returned. <laughs> I'm not saying who might have borrowed it. I'm just saying right. it's still here. Okay. And it's not been turned over on its side or its lid. You didn't go up to Ken Edwards to get a burger, did you? In it? Perhaps. It, no, actually, I didn't. No? I didn't. I did not go to Ken Edwards on it to get a burger. Okay. Not at all. You did, didn't you? No, I came back on it. <laughs> so somebody else got it there. I just got it back, so it's fine. <laughs> so I think we're probably almost wrapping it up here. I think so. What's the uh, re remainder of the schedule? We're gonna do a drivers' meeting here in a little while. Drivers' meeting, and uh, we're gonna have the 32 cars out on the front stretch. Yep. Do we're some parade lap we're stuff. Line them up, World of Outlaw style. Salute to the fans. Nice. Four wide, eight deep. Yeah, I like it. Um, I am assuming that we can make it official that whoever wins is encouraged to do a burnout on the front stretch. We don't condone that. Well, who am I kidding? Yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let her rip. We've already had Ken Edwards autograph that third of the track. We need to work on autographing all of it. There you go. Right at the start finish line. Eight or ten donuts. Absolutely. Burn down those BFGs or those Falcons or those Kumos. Kumos. Ah. Two grand. So, if you win on a Viper ACR, ten thousand. Yep. If you win on not a Viper ACR, there's a bounty, just like the old days of Clearfield Speedway. Yep. Two grand. You get twelve thousand dollars to the winner. It's going to be pretty exciting. I can't wait. I'm excited for all the action. You guys should be too. Remember that we will be live for the entire thing. The shootout on Facebook. There are some twists to come we're not even telling you about. So uh, hang with us. Everybody go get some monkey bread if you're in the stands. Grab yourself a beverage. All you racers that were losers, I mean, didn't make it in. There is food and appetizers and beer in the VIP section for you. The kiddos can go grab a snack as well. I will be down in the infield right there in all the action watching it happen firsthand and uh, it's going to be good. Somebody's winning big money tonight here at UMI Motorsports Park. See you at 8 o'clock everybody. Good? Yeah. We're, Perfect. We ran, we ran out of memory card space so I had to keep the camera from shutting off. Oh! I just, I had to and I dropped the sponsors. I was like, oh my god, I gotta remember all of them. I hope we all. Like I one, think we did. One thing I didn't even like think to look at was a memory card. Yeah. Uh, was it oh, 30 good. minutes?
It was way over there. Oh, dude, it was long. <laughs> yeah, it was long. But who cares? It was what we needed to be talking. We got almost up to 40 people.